Okay guys, welcome back. In part two, what we're going to do is continue with our project, adding a few effects and changing the color. First thing we're going to do in part two is we're going to apply a filter to this image to give it a very high contrast look. The filter we're going to use can be found in the filter and under the filter gallery. So if we go to the filter gallery, we're going to go to the sketch folder right here. And in the sketch folder, we're going to select the stamp tool. All right. And then in the stamp tool, there's a few settings that we can make to adjust how we want it to look here. Um, you might start at about, you know, I would say maybe 13, 14, and a smoothness of maybe even one. So it has very rough corners. All right. Um, if you get your smoothness too high, obviously it's not going to work very well. So we're going to go to smooth this and then, you know, adjust this light balance until you get the level of detail you'd like to see in your image. And this is going to be a very, very high contrast type of image. All right. Once that's done, you can go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice I have my image. And right now my image has been changed to red because that's the color that was selected in my color picker. All right, so if I were to undo that and I selected, say, black in my color picker, and then I went to filter and filter gallery again, under sketch, you'll notice then I can change it to that color. We're going to go with black on the first one, but the subsequent ones can be any other color that you wish. Our second step, once we stamp this, all right, is going to be to add a color behind it. Warhol would usually use a lot of vibrant pop type colors in the background. So to do that, you're going to make a new layer. You're going to fill that by selecting a color and you can either select it here in the color picker or you can go edit and fill if you wish. And under contents, you can say, all right, rather than picking a black or white, you can go to color and you can pick a, you know, a bright vibrant color that you might want to use for your background. In this case, I'll use a yellow. All right, and I'm going to fill that layer with yellow. Now, for that color to show through, this layer must be underneath this layer, so I'm going to move it down and under. And then on this layer, I want the color everywhere. All right, now, it's up to you. You could leave your face white if you wish, um, like I've done here. All right, or if I change my layer mode here to multiply, you'll notice... Multiply allows all the color from the layer underneath to show through this layer. So then I could have my first of many boxes drawn. From there, I'm going to go on and I'm going to continue this effect over and over and over again on multiple layers. I can use the same photo if I wish, or I could duplicate it and use a different effect. So for instance, I still have my original layer intact. I could turn that layer to a new layer. All right, and I could even copy the mask from one layer to another. If I hold down my Option key, let's just turn these two layers off temporarily so you can see the layer that I'm working on. If I hold down my Option key, I can drag the mask from this layer to this layer, applying it. And then I could go through a series of effects as well. So I might go to Adjustments. All right, make sure I'm on the photo. Go to Image, Adjustments, and the Channel Mixer again. Click Monochrome. All right, and then as we did before, my settings were 70 and then approximately 44 and 44. And click OK, and I can convert this into a monochrome photo. And then I can try all kinds of other things to this image if I wish. Another effect you may want to try is image, adjustments, and posterize. Okay. Posterizing an image will give you a high contrast image as well. So you can go two levels, seven levels, okay, three or four levels would give you multiple colors, okay, or multiple shades of um, that monochrome color as well. So I could click OK on that and I would have another Warhol type effect. I'd add another layer underneath that layer, making sure the layer is underneath. And once again, go to Edit and Fill and I can fill with a color and this time let's use something in the green range click OK and what did I do? Oh, click OK and then once again on this layer I could either leave it like this or I could go to multiply if I wish and 
have the color everywhere. So either way would be fine. You could leave it on normal or color. That's up to you on how you want your project to look. Once you have all of your layers built and you have nine different variations of your piece of artwork, and keep in mind you can use the same image or different images, but if you do use different images you'll have to create a separate mask for each one. You'll then be able to arrange this into a grid and that will be in video three of how to make your Andy Warhol print and we'll get to that one next.